Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Lock On Podcast, episode number seven. I'm your host, Kyle. Uh, we got the panel back today. We got to uh, go around. Uh, Avery, how you doing? Doing good, Kyle. How you doing, man? Good, good. Just uh, trying to finish up so many things before these new console launches, that's for sure. Yeah, I hear you, but we're almost there. Not almost there, gritty. almost there. Yeah, uh, Sean? Hi. How you been doing? I'm good. I've been frantically refreshing Twitter and election results all day. <laughs> I think everybody <laughs> has. It's kind of consumed my life a little bit, uh, and I'm not even in, in the, the U.S. It's just, I, I will say, if Donald Trump gets uh, outed like we are looking like it's going to be, uh, I will be a tad bit upset because I will care about U.S. politics that much less after. <laughs> Because every day you just wake up and there's something trending or something going on and it includes Trump and it's like, oh, okay, what do you do today? And finally, we've got good old Tim. How you doing, buddy? Hello. I'm doing all right. Doing okay. Good. I'm doing a sleep study tonight, so that'll be fun. Oh. That's yeah. A good time. <laughs> Get to all right, sleep well, we got... all wired up like a spy or something. Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, we were going to shoot yesterday. I wasn't really feeling the best, so we decided to shoot today. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, and we're going to talk about, obviously, the biggest thing that came out on Thursday, which is the Xbox One, or see, I did it already, Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S reviews. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll just start, jump right into it. Sean? A lot of eights and nines. I think a lot of the stuff on there is pretty much what we expected. And, you know, the, the short form for those that, you know, maybe haven't looked too into it. The console's fantastic. It's a uh, great design. It's great internally. It does everything well. But the games are lacking. Yeah, I mean, that that's the thing. Like, it, it's, it's so, here, here's the thing. I know you guys, I know that uh, Tim and you are decidedly pro Xbox, and I'm not saying this to be a dick, but Microsoft bungled this launch. For sure. They did, they were not prepared for this launch. And I, the only reason why I think they're they, like, theoretically they should have postponed this console so that they had something to release with it. Um, I get why they didn't for, for monetary reasons. They're a publicly traded company. You know, they have probably third party deals with stuff, people like Ubisoft and stuff. But it's like now we're seeing previews today with to go along with the reviews, and they're showing Gears of War. And that's exciting for maybe four million Xbox fans. Gears of War isn't, it's, it's a good seller, but it's not like it's going to sell to people that are buying the Xbox at launch. If you want people are on the fence and they're like, Oh, let me check out this console. And they're only showing a game from last year. That's not exciting. And it's, and it's, and then that is not good. I don't know why they should have done whatever they should have sucked, whatever dick they needed to, to make sure they could get games like Assassin's Creed <laughs> Valhalla as one of the preview games for today. You know what I mean? Like they still have time. It could, it could still come, but I think that's because it's not in their hands. That's not their game, but they needed something current gen or next gen, not an old ass game that's getting up res. It, it looks great, but it still doesn't look like a, a next gen game. And I think that's the problem is that, is that, the, and so it's reinforcing the, the, I don't want to say narrative because it sounds like it's made up, but it reinforces the thought that you can wait for this console. Yeah, no, I agree with you a hundred percent. Even as an Xbox guy that's getting this console, uh, it is disheartening to kind of see, you know, the, the PlayStation sitting over there. It's got um, dark or dark souls already uh, Demon, Demon souls. souls and uh, you know, Spider-Man. And it's just got stuff that yes, you can play a lot of it on, ps4 but it's something new it's something that people yes. haven't experienced before and mm -hmm. i think that's such a big deal when it comes to a console launch because mm -hmm. yes the xbox one launch was absolutely terrible but there were a lot of good hidden gems and i think one of the most underrated games from last generation is rise son of rome <laughs> i thought it was a, a beautiful looking game in terms of graphics yes was it generic it was that. What, it was yeah, that. It, yeah what was it a, a generic uh you know hack and slash yes did it get repetitive? Yes. But it was just something new. It was something that you could bring friends over and say, hey, 
look at what my next gen console can do. And they'd be like, wow, these are amazing graphics. I've never seen that before. And it was even, you know, uh, back when the 360 launched, um, you know, it might have not been at launch, but Gears launched within half a year, not even. Mm -hmm. And it was the, you know, the big, wow, this is a next generation console. Um, Tim, do you, you know, is there, has there ever been another console launch that you can remember that hasn't had one of those games that's, you know, wow factor, you know, look at these graphics. This is something brand new. Even if it's on a different console, it's something that's brand new at for launch. Uh, the thing that comes to my mind is the 3DS launch. I mean, there were games that showed the 3D, but they all felt like tech demos. Um, the, that game, that console didn't have anything uh, that was uh, like a, a killer app per se until Super Mario 3D Land came out. Now I will, I, I will say, close to a year to, later. To, yeah, I, w I will say just to play devil's advocate. Nintendogs wasn't a great game, but Nintendogs had that like kind of following of, oh wow, look, I can take care of a, a dog, and I it really did appeal to a lot of people, and it was, you know. Well, I, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I mean specifically the 3DS. Oh, okay, okay, not the yeah, the, the original see. DS I thought had a pretty good launch yeah. lineup, but yeah, the, you're correct, you're correct. The 3DS had Steel Diver. Mm -hmm. So like, and and, it, and the, and the it Legend is of Zelda. Up, it, sorry, it is it funny that you bring up the DS or the 3DS because it's kind of like the Xbox in a way because it had full backwards compatibility, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it uh, yeah, it had full backwards compatibility. Yeah, I mean that it had Steel Diver and it had. I think that that was like the big marquee one at launch, and oh, it had the Super. It had a. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D, which was good, but it was just that game and with better graphics, right? So I think that that's kind of similar. Um, that's the closest thing in my memory, other than you go back to the 90s, like the Turbo Graphics or something. But the the fact is that, 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 that console almost died. They almost just stopped selling it until Mario came. I don't think that's going to be the case here. I think there is enough of an argument for hardcore fans to get the Xbox. Um, because there are, you know, there are games you can play that are recent enough. But, um, I mean, yeah, it's it's very unusual that there's nothing that's like, dude, I've got you got to check out, you know, what, what, how this game looks or this new mechanic that they couldn't have in the last one because of polygon count or whatever. Yeah, and and I agree 100 percent there. And you know, we again, I'll play devil's advocate in defense of Xbox. There is stuff there. There is stuff there that you know especially for hardcore, if you're a hardcore Xbox fan, you're getting this, there's a really good chance that you probably haven't played Gears Tactics. I know I haven't. I never played it on PC, and I'm really excited to play it. I'm excited to, you know, use the 120. Essentially, the, the hardware upgrades I'm excited for being a console gamer, and I think that's what a lot of hardcore uh, Xbox fans in general are excited for, is not specifically, obviously, the games aren't there, but they're just excited for the huge graphical enhancements on games they already enjoy are there. Um, mm -hmm. Avery, are you one of those people, like, for the Xbox you know, if, if you could afford to get both, would you still say to yourself, you know what, I think I'm going to pick up the, you know, whether it be the Series S or the Series X, specifically because I want to see the games that are running on my Xbox One just run that much better. Um, so putting myself in the shoes of someone that like wouldn't have a gaming PC, because that's what I would play all my Xbox games through, like through the Game Pass. But if I didn't have that, I would probably still hold off on getting an xbox just because i mean their launch game was supposed to be halo and i kind of want to see why you know hopefully we find out why they just pulled the plug on it right now and had to wait a whole seemingly another year because yeah without that it's just like you guys are saying all a lot of recycled stuff um just with increased graphics and while, like you mentioned before, a lot of the PS5 games that we can play at launch are going to be on PS4. But like you said, it is still something new. It's something that we haven't played before. And so we can, like, for example, with, like with Watch Dogs, I mean, playing it on PS5 is probably going to feel amazing because the load times will be just non-existent. And that's going to make that game that much better. Yeah. But still that's the only thing that xbox is banking on and so unfortunately like while the tech is great again games is going to be pushing it and they don't have that yeah no uh and and let's let's not i don't like the narrative you know and it's not me trying to be fanboys i don't like the narrative in saying that xbox has no new games because yeah, it doesn't have any new first party games you've got day one you've got assassin's creed 
you know, you've got Call of Duty a few days later. You're going to have, you know, all the graphical upgrades. It has games. Yeah. And then in December, you get the medium, which, you know, we don't really know. It, it looks pretty. The but same pretty... day as Cyberpunk. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> at least one's on Game Pass. <laughs> so, you know, at least you don't have to pay for that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cyberpunk's there. So there are definitely stuff that people are going to pick up and be able to play with this console. It's not something that's going to be like, oh my God, I'm only going to have Gears 5 and you know, Halo Master Chief Collection and all the old Xbox One games. There will be stuff there. However, yeah. stuff like, you know, Demon Souls is just so nice. Like, it's just so great to look at. It's like, wow, like, this is a game. Yes, is it, it, you know, you heard the argument. It's a remake of an old game, and I get that. And I'm sure in a perfect world, both consoles would launch with a brand new game that's only on PS4 or PS5 or only on Series X, and you can't get anywhere else in a perfect world. I think that's what a lot of people would want. But yeah. people are not going to abandon the older hardware, or companies won't, because that's money <laughs> yeah that's a yeah, lot and also that the uh, you know? robots in tech land or whatever that game's called that's been you being used to showcase the controller yeah the, i i when 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 you bring up the that astrobot astro astro <laughs> astro <bots. laughs> robots in tech land. <laughs> <laughs> the when you talk about like valhalla and uh and cyberpunk 2077 those that's why i say it's different from the 3ds where that console was like almost shriveled on the vine yeah because they all had to be first party games yeah and so and and the 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 literally there was no there were no games coming out for it until mario so it's not going to be like that i'm not saying the xbox is doomed i think it'll do fine but initially it's a similar feeling it's like well what's you know what's new here but yeah oh I, i'm in agreement i'm in agreement for sure um now sean just you know you're just getting to, the ps5 well, just, just to expand on that just a little bit. The, okay, so let's look back at the last year and look at the thing. A lot, of, a lot of the decisions Microsoft made over this current gen have been for optics and PR, right? They stopped revealing console sales because the, the numbers didn't look as impressive as Sony's. Even though it was successful, it just didn't look as good as PS4, so they stopped sharing sales numbers, right? Then they were optically... Get, getting drubbing because they pretty much stopped. Do they? They canceled four games. They announced four games at E3 2014. One of them was delayed till 2019. The other three were canceled. Right. Then you have the 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 narrative that they don't have games. So everything they're doing is they, so a lot of the things that they're doing are for optics. Right. So not having the games at launch. It, I agree with Tim. It's not. It's not going to be a nail in the coffin for Xbox. I think they're going to have a very successful gym, but optically, that's where they're taking the hit. So, so basically, gonna, what you're saying is it's reinforcing up. that narrative of yes. Xbox doesn't have any games. Yes. Yes. And it, I agree with you. Like when, whenever somebody talks about a, a weak launch lineup, I'm like, there's. It's. I'm like, there's tons of third party games. Like you can still like you if if you don't like everything that the first party is offering, you still have a ton of third party games to play. So Xbox fans will have it. My comment was more about the way they're previewing it today. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not about it's not about what the launch is. I'm just talking about the preview and the press coverage today, which was important, just optically didn't have the oomph that it should have had yeah when you have yeah. gears five obviously like the upper as they look nice but it's not something that any, anyone's gonna be like wow i definitely need to go out and spend you know six hundred dollars on this console i definitely they should have they should have sprung for 2070 for cyberpunk for sure that yeah. that might have pushed some consoles if they had but the problem with that is won't be there next it won't be there next week yeah not next week but hey within a month yeah it's it's hard because you know what would would we be having this conversation if Halo was here? No. If, if, we, if they, we I want to know the story about if they man. sprung if they sprung for Cyberpunk and they had to show a demo, Cyberpunk would have been delayed till twenty seventy seven because that means they would have to stop to work on a demo. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, I tell you, man, I want to know the story behind what has gone on with Halo Infinite. That game's been in production. For what, like I, I have six a, or seven years? I have a feeling we're gonna hear a lot of stuff after the game comes out. I think that's when yeah, you're gonna start I'm, hearing things. I'm excited for the five year retrospective when people have moved on from the company. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like no. what is that gonna? What it'll are those books gonna read like? It'll it'll be interesting because I think this is, you know, uh, I know we're getting a little bit off topic, but just when it comes to Halo, um, it's 
it's hard to look at this, and if this game does not come out to solid nines and tens across the board, I think Microsoft has to start asking themselves, is this, a, you know, do we need to find a different developer? You know? A Avery, yeah. do you have any thoughts on, on the quick Halo thing? Yeah, real quick. So I was thinking about this earlier, and uh, if if Infinite doesn't, you know, perform as well as they, as they hope, then I can easily see a franchise like Gears of War taking over as like the Xbox like flagship because like Gears 5 was, you know, really well done and it kind of expanded on more of the story that they have. You mentioned Gears Tactics before and especially with how well Gears 5 is going to run with Series X. Um, I just see a lot of good things for Gears right now. And so they're kind of moving in the opposite direction. I would like to see... As much as I like Wolfenstein, I would like to see machine games take over Halo. Yeah, because they I think they can do this. They can do story and they can do gameplay. Like the shoot, they they make a great shooter. Yeah, because Halo. I mean, you know, if they ever did go down that, you know, that way, let's be honest. Halo's lore is not something that's easy. You can step into. It is like Star Wars. Like there's a lot of stuff that you have to get right for because there's a lot of people that care about that game in a lore based way. Where you know, oh this you know, elite needs this certain skin color or this, you know, you can't touch this time period because this, this, and this happened. Um, it's like Star Wars in that way. And there is a lot of deep love for that. So it, it would be really interesting to see, you know, if 343 doesn't work out, what happens from there. But anyway, we're getting off topic here. We're going to move on um, to our next topic. And it just about, it's all about hard drives, all about hard drives, because all the hard drive news decided to drop today from every company. Um, and we'll start off again with Xbox here. And, you know, I, I think we, everyone assumed this was coming. Uh, it's just harder to hear, especially if you were one of those people that were getting excited or go, are going to be getting uh, a Series S. Uh, basically, your memory is halved, <laughs> essentially. Does it, does, sorry, I don't have, does anyone have the, the exact? I think it's like 375 three, or something like that. Maybe, oh, hold on, I'll, I'll look it up while you talk about it. Yeah, so basically the Xbox Series S's um, firmware that's actually built into the console, you know, for the dashboard and all that stuff, is essentially gonna take up almost half of the console's memory because it comes with a 500 gigabyte SSD. 364 gigs. Is how much is it remaining? On the, on the, S, on the Xbox Series S. Okay, yeah. So that's how much is remaining out of the 500. And, you know, we got news, I think it was yesterday or today, that Call of Duty is going to take up around 135 gigs on the, the Xbox. If you want everything, you can un uninstall things. And we still don't really know how the Warzone thing is going to happen. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy that one you're going to put Call of Duty on there. Let's see, if you buy an, uh, you know, an S... I would assume, again, there's nothing wrong with it, but I would assume you're more of a casual gamer, which is fine. No. You're probably going to play Call of Duty, or you probably do, or sports games. Well, right there, I looked it up, Call of Duty, 135 gigs. You got Madden, which is already around 50 gigs, but you got to assume with the, you know, Madden or FIFA with the upgrades, that it'll probably be somewhere around 70 or 80. Then you're probably going to get Cyberpunk, which is going to be another 100 and, you know, let's, let's ballpark it and say 125. Well, you're, you, you, you don't have any more space at that point. Yeah, you're done. You're done. you got three games. I don't even think you could fit all three games on there with that. Yeah, with, especially with if that. they have, like, updates and stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that, the, the Series S really is, it really is the casual secondary console yeah. or people that want to try out Game Pass. Um, you know what's going to help? And you guys can talk about this, too. But what's going to really help them is when they finally get so that like X Cloud, yeah, to be able to stream the games to that console, yeah. Then, then it's just your streaming box. Granted, it's a little more than I would like to pay for a streaming box, yeah. but that will help that a lot. Once yeah, X Cloud gets that saturation, I think once you get the uh, X Cloud in there, uh, it's a game changer. Just because you install your multiplayer based games, and you leave, and you just you know stream the single player ones. Um, and then there's That's the other thing. That, say, yeah. Yeah. Then there's the other thing about how you can just you can still plug a USB hard drive in, um, and you can store the games on there. And then when you want to play them, you just cycle through. And obviously, um, 
cycling through them and transferring them between the external hard drive and your internal SSD is not going to be crazy long, I don't think. If it's as long as it does now, I have an external hard drive. I swap games around pretty frequently. On the, on the Xbox uh, One S, um, which is what I have, um, you can play them off the hard drive. You can't do that with the, the, the series uh, mm -hmm. consoles. But it still takes a, a minute, you know. It's, yeah. I really want to play this game. Let me make a sandwich and call my mom first, though. <laughs> I mean, it's... <laughs> It's, it's going to take a little while. bit. Yeah. So we'll um, see. Yeah. The, it sucks. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, Sean, would you say that this is a necessary thing if you want to get a console down to the price point that they have it? Uh, what? The, the, the Series S existing or oh, the, the size of the space? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The, I mean, there was no way they could have done a one terabyte. But the, like I talked about before, it's, it's crazy to me that for this console that's less powerful than the Series X, if you want that expanded storage, you're paying more than you would for a Series X. So just with that has more power. So just get the Series X. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, granted, obviously, maybe, the, you know, you're not going to buy them both at the same time, most people. But I guarantee you there's going to be somebody who's not doing that math. And they're just going to be like, oh, I get the Series X. Oh, and let me get, let me get this hard drive. So let me get this, like, expansion card. Yeah. And they won't realize that, that for that same amount of money less than that amount of money they could have just bought the, the series x yeah and you know what i 100 percent agree with your statement from earlier is that this is a you know casual uh, you don't see hardcore people are going to buy this yeah no that, that's well, just not. not likely i will say there is going to be a market for people who uh who are mono liners who really only play one game at a time until yep. it's done and, then and you know what and, and i genuinely see i genuinely see a lot of people picking up a ps5 and then also picking this up that's what i'm saying it'll be a good secondary console yeah and and that and you know what i think microsoft like they've you know been showing the last year or two they don't care what you play on they don't as they want you to play. They want you to be in their yeah, ecosystem. Yeah, as long as you're in their ecosystem. They care what you play yeah. on. Let's not let's not oversell that. They care what you play on. They don't want you playing on PS5. Yeah. But if you get a PS5 and also a Series S, they can they'll, they'll deal. They'll take it. And if I was definitely someone getting a PlayStation and I had that little extra bit of cash, like think about it. You could get that in Game Pass um, alongside the PS5 and you, you know, and it doesn't even have to be right away. You can go get the PS5 and then like a month or two later, pick up the Series S and have it, yeah. you know, really cheap, have Game Pass. It's, it's a good deal. I, They're I, a little bit opinion. like an old-fashioned diva. I don't care what you think as long as it's about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Avery, can you ever, you know, as someone who's more play, uh, PS5, you know, centered, do you ever see yourself getting this or are you just straight... I want to get the, the Series X if I'm going to get something. Um, so, I mean, like, going back to what you guys were saying about, like, the secondary console and everything, uh, I mean, again, for me, if I didn't have my PC, and I plan on probably getting a new PC next year, if I wasn't doing that, then, yeah, I'd probably get a Series S as, like, my supplement to the PS5. Uh, I think what Microsoft should be doing, which I think they have started to see that, is that not to primarily go up against playstation but maybe try and take away from the pc market um seeing that the series x is i mean i've seen people say it's like the closest thing to a gaming pc with a console and so it's like if you're having that much power in that box then it is a easier alternative than getting into a pc and it's a lot less uh, it's more cost efficient too so they should probably see about maybe taking some people away from that market versus because PS5 is just going to, it's going to sell like, you know, hotcakes with all their exclusive games. So I don't know what to say. Yeah. I've always kind of thought that I feel like Microsoft would be in a prime position if you use the, I know, and I know they're a software company primarily, but if you use the Xbox, um, you know, branding and you build one of those pre-built, you know, Alienware type PCs. Um, and, you know, you could do it. I always kind of thought that that was a market that they would maybe tip into, but obviously I don't think they are now, but I always thought that was interesting because I feel like that branding kind of works. Um, 
just because it's a games machine, essentially. Um, but moving on to the flip side, we've got the PS5 news that the uh, PS5 essentially will not use internal you can't replace yeah, the internal you, ssd uh, you will um, never be able to replace it it's the ex, it's the expansion port expansion correct yeah you're just not at launch uh so this doesn't really give us a date of how long we're supposed to be you know is it going to be just a software update is it going to be something you, you know you have to buy an adapter like we don't really know yet uh sean do you kind of have any feelings on this uh, we do know you don't have to buy an adapter. In the teardown, they showed the the place where you're going to put the expansion. The uh, the reason why they're not doing it, they said certainly said they weren't going to. This was going to be the case back in March. It's because there's not nothing on the market that's as fast as the SS the custom SSD. So they need to wait till they make something gets made when they get released, and then they're going to basically release a list of these are the ones you can are compatible with PS5. There's just nothing on the market. So right now they're not, they're not even bothering having that uh, um, ability in there at first to keep probably to prevent, keep people from per, uh, save people from themselves, so to speak. <laughs> so, Cause I can picture somebody being like, Oh, this will work and then put it in there and it might do something, have some adverse effect on the console. So right now they're just like, Oh, it's going to be in a, in a firmware update when that ability comes. And that probably will happen when there's on the off the shelf, SSDs that will fit there that are compatible. And I think what we need to do as well is anybody that's kind of saving hope that these SSDs are going to be any cheaper than the Xbox ones, I think can probably just stop believing that right now. Cause I, SSD software or hardware, excuse me, is just expensive in general, even for regular PCs. Yeah. But the not being proprietary gives it more wiggle room on for uh, sure. pr on sale pricing and stuff like that. That's sure. the problem. You're... So, like we talked about it on the podcast with a couple of, a couple episodes ago, it was the same thing with the Vita memory cards. Those there was no fucking reason why that couldn't be just a standard off the shelf SD card. Yeah. But Sony had to make it proprietary, and they they it was astronomically priced. It was like a hundred bucks for like a thirty gig or something. It yeah. was ridiculous. Now we're not like I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far into saying like, obviously I don't think that situation is the same as this. Like the hard drive is priced aggressively. Yes. But I think that's just because SSDs in general are priced at that point. No, but you, but the room is that there, you have more leeway. It's just why like Nintendo. Correct. You have more people you can say, Hey, we can have a deal on this. We can yeah. you know, have a competition. Sale on this. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Tim, do you kind of think that these, you know, if they're not doing proprietary hard drives, do you think we're going to see either specific branding on these things for PlayStation? Do you think that runs up the cost? Cause you know, I, I've seen external hard drives for PlayStation and Xbox now that have the branding, but they cost more. Yeah, they do. Um, I think that there will be select partners. And I, I do think they'll, I mean, they have to sell as much as they can sell with their logos on it. They're going to, I mean, t-shirts, mugs and, and hardware included, of course. So, um, I mean, yeah, there will be, but I think there will be a few trusted partners, you know, um, companies that, that they strike deals with, that they know this company puts out a product that's high enough quality that we're not going to have any backlash on us if their product fails. You know, I don't think they're ever going to just open it up to the whole market, but I do think that they'll have, like Microsoft has something similar to that right now. Um, there's a handful of games that, of, uh, uh, not games, there's a handful of uh, external hard drives that are functional with the Xbox. I'm sure you could hook up anything, but it will reject it unless it's by this handful of companies because they have to, you know, inspect, the, they have to make uh, those connections and, and those uh, associations in such a way that protects them down the line. You know, you yeah. can't have a third party product go bust because then it looks bad on you. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, Avery, do you, you know, being having the PC in terms of, do you have uh, like an SSD for your PC now? Um, yeah, I do have an SSD in there. Um, and I would go back and forth between either saving games on the SSD or saving games on my actual hard drive. Yeah. Um, and so like, that's one of the things that I'm excited about for, 
the next gen is having that SSD and being able to, you know, really utilize those fast load times and everything like that. Yeah. Um, but I, speaking from a storage uh, s space as a whole, um, it, I don't I don't really care about having like a whole lot of storage just because like I'm more about what Tim was saying before about how some people just play one game at a time. And so I, I may not play just one at a time, but I'd fall in the category of like, if I finish a game, then I might as well just delete it off my system. I mean, it's yeah. I'm, not, I'm never going to play it again, so there's no point in keeping it there. And so, if you want to, you just reinstall. Exactly. And so, I mean, what, at most, I might have two or three games loaded on there. And then, you know, when I'm done, I'll uninstall it. And then later on down the road, like you said, you'll reinstall if they have some DLC. But so storage isn't really that big of an issue with me. Yeah, I don't know if I'm the only one that's done this. Has anyone kind of gone through their games library one night or, you know, you're scrolling through and you kind of see a couple games. You're like, why do I even have these on here? I'm not going to play these. All the time. All the time. <laughs> Only All since time. I got Game Pass. <laughs> I had, I had, um, I bought, there's certain, I usually buy physical, but occasionally there's, a, there's, when there's a game I know I'm just going to not sell, you know, I'll get it digitally. So I did that with Red Dead because I had every intention of playing Red Dead online and then I played it and I hated it. But when I got Red Dead, I, I had, I had Red Dead on my PS4 from the day it came out to the day it died. Wow. Cause I, and I never, I never went back to it cause I beat the story and I was, it's always that thing where it's like, well, maybe I'll dip my toe into this. If I'm really bored on it, I like to have rainy day things on my heart. Like just, just if the mood hits me, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So and there's certain games that I won't delete. Like all my from games are getting put on my PS five. Um, you know, like stuff like that, but like in call of duty, like, I, I had Call of Duty, even though I fucking p was pissed off and bitched about it every week, I had Call of Duty until my, like, Modern Warfare until it crashed. I played multiplayer, um, but I just didn't download it again because I, I'm i fed up with their bullshit with Warzone being attached to multiplayer. But, like, yeah, I, I usually play one game at a time, but I do like to leave some games on there and because it's just easier than being, like, I know I'm going to replay a Naughty Dog game because it's kind of like watching a movie again, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, there's certain games that I just – comfort games and i'm just like oh there's nothing to play so i'll play that but for the most part i do delete games but the space is so small and it doesn't look like the games are getting smaller like we yeah. were told they would yeah no i agree i i don't think we're gonna see too many games get smaller if i'm being honest no, even though we have the faster all. hard drives and i genuinely think it like game development it usually is i think the start of the generation is going to be kind of crappy for um, file sizes and I think as we go and developers get used to these consoles and these SSDs that are built into them I think you're going to see a little bit better um, compression for most of these games and I'm just kind of curious um, do any of you guys have any games that you know you're like single player games or multiplayer doesn't matter do you have any games that right now you're like oh I really want to play but I really want to either replay it or start playing it only when I've got the new console in hand Wait, well, rephrase that? So basically what I'm asking is, are there any games that you want to play, but you keep telling yourself, I'm going to only play this when I've got the new console because I want to either replaying a specific game. Because, you know, for yes. me, for example, I have, um, I've been really itching to go play through the um, uh, Gears 5 campaign again because I've only ever, I beat it once. And now seeing all of these upgrades, even though I really want to play it because it's sitting here in front of me, uh, I definitely am like no. I'm I'm waiting specifically for the for the series yeah. X. Yes. What, what's yeah. that for you? Um, well, I'm gonna. Re I wanted to do a um, grounded run on um, the Last of Us Part Two, and I was waiting for that. Um, I was gonna do New Game Plus for Ghost of Tsushima. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, just just we're talking about compression size. Sekiro is only 12 and a half gigs. That's crazy. They, From is the best compression ever. Their games are small. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, those are the, those are the three. And I'm, I'm going to fire up Watch Dogs Legion again, just want, and wrap up and get the, the, go for the platinum on the PS5 on the upgrade. Right now I'm just playing through it for the review, but then I, I'm going to wrap it up with the uh, PS5 version. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? Since you just, oh, go ahead, Tim. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say... Um, we have less than a minute, Tim. Yeah. Oh, we do? Okay. 
Yeah. Let him Never come back then. and then we'll go back. Yeah, hold, you know what? hold that thought. Yeah, yeah hold on. <laughs> All right, Tim. How about for you? What do you – game that you're yeah. waiting on? I know it's actually been out for a while now, but I have purposely not played Control yet. Mm. Uh, because I I think that – um, from what I understand, that game has a stuttering problem on the uh, Xbox current, the Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Uh, either versions of it, like I frame rate lag. Is what you're yeah, doing. yeah, like it, 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 it flutters. The frame rate yeah. flutters. It's a good looking and, game, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, and it looks like so much exactly the kind of like like that is a Tim ass game. So <laughs> this is like for me. So I'm holding out on that just to play it on the nicer hardware. That's a, good, that's a good call. Yeah. Because I, I think that, uh, man, I loved Alan Wake. Like, Alan Wake's one of my favorite games ever. Uh, I never played their the Quantum Break, but... I, I like yeah. that more than Alan Wake, personally. Really? Yeah. I, 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 really like, I actually one. got um, Quantum Break. I think I got it for free. I think I won some contests. Um, but I got it for free and I wasn't really going to play it. And I, I was actually one of the people that I didn't mind. Like it was like you sat down, you, you could relax. You know, there's not a lot of games out there where you can kind of just actually sit back and be like, ah, I'm just playing a fun game. Uh, but I liked, you know, you play and then, oh, you watch a TV show for 20 minutes. <laughs> I like games. I like, I like, I will, I'm somebody who always appreciates an amb- ambitious failure yeah. over just playing it safe. And I don't think Quantum Break was a failure. I get why people didn't like it, but for me, I like the big swings. Um, I cuz Alan Wake is the only uh, um, the only remedy game I don't like. I like everything else that they that I played with that. So which is the first two Mac Pains, um, you know, the Quantum Break and Control, and they take those big swings and I love them for it. Yeah. No, I, I've always liked I don't okay. think they get rewarded enough with sales. Like none of their games are hit sales. Well, the big, their biggest game. problem is they all of their games. I feel like other than, um, I would you know Alan Wake to an extent and Quantum Break is. I feel like they're almost the like even to Quantum Break to an extent. Like they, the budget behind them, it always feels like especially with marketing, it doesn't always feel like it's complete. Like there's yeah. not a lot of budget. For they're hard to market. They make hard to market games. Like how like how can you sell that control, or let's, I guess I haven't played control, but like Alan Wake has this dark kind of mystery behind it, but then yeah. the gameplay itself has a lot more excitement to it than that. And it's, it's, it's kind of, it's niche. For yeah. Sure. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to sell both talking points mm-hmm. in a single ad. Yep. So I agree. All right. Well, we are going to move on to our final topic here and it's going to be watchdog centered. Did, did you um, ask? Did we get Avery's take on that? Which games he's waiting for? Oh, did I? I can't remember. If I asked you. Um, you did, Avery. No, I mean, I've I've mentioned before that I mean, because Tim brought a good one with Control. That was one that I always wanted to play, but never got around to it. And I'm just the type of person that I'll keep saying that I'm going to play something and just never do. If it's <laughs> already like you know old, then I'm probably not going to go back to it it's almost like a movie you know in the theaters you say oh if i don't see this within the first two weeks of it being released i'm probably not gonna go see it yeah so that's kind of the same thing with games no i'm i'm there with you there are so many games i get behind on because i'm like oh i'll I'll buy it later and then i ever buy it because it's not something i wanted to play day one that definitely happens to me um so anyway excuse that but we're gonna move on to our final topic which is watchdog centered um all three of you guys have played watchdogs i'm the only one that hasn't um so i guess we'll start um obviously no spoilers that so don't worry about that we're just gonna give our base impressions on the game and the gameplay specifically um sean you're reviewing the game for the site uh what do you think so far without giving too much away um the short version is i like watchdogs gameplay i uh watch like legion's gameplay i could not care less about the story but um, this is just my own personal opinion. I think most video game stories are forgettable. Um, there's very few exceptions where I would be like, the story is really good in that game. Um, in, in the grand scheme, like I could list a lot of games that have good stories and people are like, what are you talking about? That's a lot of stories. But when you think about all the games, it's really a small list. So, but 
but like um, it's it's a lot of fun. I will say one thing. I personally have not found much of a reason to recruit the random people you find on the street. Like even though that was a big selling point for the game, I don't feel like because each character has like a set of skills, and you can use those skills. And those you know somebody somebody will take less damage or they'll make more or they'll earn more ETO, which is the currency in the game, or they'll, uh, you know, like have quicker hacking skills or something. But like, there's other agents that have multiple things in there. Like they get a vehicle, they have like a unique weapon that you can't get anywhere else except for with that character. Though, and those are people you kind of mostly get through just playing the story. So the, getting the random people on the street, I have, I have like 30 people that I'm thinking about recruiting, but then I'm like, I'm going to go back and do, like I said, I'm going to go back and do those on PS5 once I finish the story. But that, that isn't as interesting as I had hoped it would be uh, because they've limited the people with multiple like good worthwhile abilities. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I am playing on permadeath, and I've managed to not lose any characters. That's impressive. Because I know a lot of people have made some mistakes already on permadeath. <laughs> um, are you there be me. playing on, on permadeath? You are? <laughs> yeah, I've lost, I've lost about five people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five, five people dead. One person got critically injured, and another one got arrested. Any, wow. any horrifying Angry. deaths that you'd like to report? Uh, one dude just died randomly. I guess he had a, a little perk thing that said, yeah, spontaneous death. So we were, I was just hovering around on a cargo, cargo drone, just going across the city. And then suddenly boom, and he just fell down like the GTA dude. And so <laughs> well, besides that, I mean, I'm kind of with Sean too. Like, I'm not really here for the story. It, it feels like gta with like hacking abilities and so i like you know if you have to infiltrate somewhere figuring out different ways of how to get to what you need to do whether you're going from camera to camera you know disabling uh the security systems and uh arming those little traps and having people walk into them and get electrocuted like there was this one mission where i had to steal this van and i was able to do everything from the outside of the restricted area i just went and did all the traps i opened the door and i took the car and i just drove it out and then i just ran across the street and hopped in and drove away and so things like that are really cool to me and being able to utilize all the different you know gadgets and hacking abilities um and i, and I do take have some pleasure in recruiting a lot of people just to fill out the roster so then i do have a lot of meat shields i can just get up, get out of the way and so at that point, I'd be able more reckless, you know. So, do you feel like you're more enjoying the sandbox they they've created more than the actual, you know, game itself? Yeah, yeah. For the most part, I mean, right now the story is getting a little bit more interesting, and so I'm I'm refraining from skipping cutscenes. But the one thing I do hate about recruiting people is that like the the missions that you have to do for them are a bit strenuous that it's it's not worth it in the long run like sean is saying like recruiting random people in the street is kind of a pain in the ass because they have to be like okay yeah i'll work with you but go uh go get these drugs for me or you know go rescue my friend who's been kidnapped and it's yeah, like it's really the side missions <laughs> of the game are given to you by the people you recruit yeah but, they, but they're not long. short yeah they're not short missions yeah, that's they're what i'm not. saying like doing the missions just yeah. to get somebody who can fucking like get more ETO. Fuck yeah. That. yeah. It was, so I was surprised down. the first one I tried, I was surprised at how long it took. Me too. It was like multiple sites. Like it wasn't like go clear out this one warehouse. It was like, do that, then go over here and do this. Mm -hmm. I to was be surprised. clear, there is a lot of people say that this does have a little bit of the UB, um, what do you call it? A uh, template, but uh, there's, there's no towers. There's no clear uh, compound missions. There's none of that. It's mostly like there, you, you would have to get into there. It's usually always hack based. You have to get to some central hub to hack it or upload something or do something like that. But the, the, the fog of war, the fog usually comes, goes away when you travel through it. And then once you, once you liberate um, I, a, a whole portion of town 
you in this they call it make it defiant. Once you do that, then it tells you all the tech point locations. Yeah. And then you get one special character at the end of it. Okay. Uh, Tim, yeah. you know, what, what kind of a, you know, experience? I, 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 a game you'd recommend? I would. I would recommend it. I would recommend it to somebody who has an affinity for open world games, especially. Um, or an affinity for games that rely heavily on, on tech, like technology as a mechanic. I think it's really good for that. I'm one of those people who has uh, the the weird uh, 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 sensibility that I thought the first Watch Dogs was fantastic, and I got extremely bored of the second one within just a few hours. I didn't like the second one much at all. Um, and I think part of that was a density issue because in San Francisco and the Bay Area was a little bit more spread out than Chicago was. Even if Chicago was the, the landmass was was about the same size, there just was a lot more city and a lot more to do in Chicago, it felt like. Um, this is London, so it doesn't have the spread out problem. I like that. I like that it feels like there's something to hack everywhere. Uh, I really, really do like the, 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 uh, uh, um, I'm not even sure what it's technically called, but like the infiltration process of walking up to an area that's red on the map and sending in your spider bot or a drone or, if you're playing as a bruiser, go in yourself. I, I love that. Um, and I think that it's uh, um, really good at that stuff. I like the hacking a lot. I will say it does feel – I see where Sean's coming from with how it's kind of weird that the um, uh, – those missions to recruit people, they can take very, like a long time, and you end up getting like superheroes almost – by unlocking by liberating districts or, or making them defiant and i it made me wonder why like is there something where you have a like a, a once in a in a hundred thousand chance of running into someone who's more powerful even than the superheroes you get for unlocking the districts so i found myself scanning everybody and i actually did find a construction worker who was like a like a like really well outfitted he had a couple of custom weapons and he was a construction worker so he could go to construction sites and stuff and i was in the process of trying to uh do his mission and <laughs> i uh i have mild narcolepsy and i and it, it it's only activates when it's real quiet and i'm still so don't worry i'm not going to crash my car but <laughs> i was playing and i had a, a, nar a narcoleptic episode i fell asleep and I woke up to my the, the death screen for this character that I've been playing as the whole game and was kind of attached <laughs> to. And I was like, oh my gosh, that sucks. Because I, I was walking down the hallway toward a restricted area and I had just barely crossed inside and then a riot drone saw me. And just and the riot drones are easy to get away from too. So it was just doom, 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 doom until it killed me. Luckily though, and I don't know if this is cheating, I just smashed the off button. I turned off the Xbox, and when I turned it back on, the game hadn't saved that she died. Oh, so the old okay. classic turn off. Cheater, yeah. cheater. <laughs> I, 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 it's not, it wasn't fair. <laughs> but well, um, it, it honestly, I am sounds, enjoying it. I am enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, it's it a fun like game. Are, are enjoying it for the most part. Uh, really quick, Sean, would you would you definitely recommend? As of right now, I think it's a recommend. I only need to liberate two more cities, two more districts. Um. And right now I'm just doing the little, there are like these red little like missions that you need to do to get to the, so you basically what you do is you go through each district and there's like these little red missions you do, which is like take out an MVP, a VIP or find a clue or do a, a photograph evidence, et cetera, et cetera. And once you do enough of those, you get a final mission to liberate the area. So right now I'm just doing, the, I'm doing those. And then um, I don't know if I'm done with the game because I'm not, but I'll be done liberating. Okay. One thing that's really weird, though, I did. There's this um, Fight Club kind of thing. Yeah. And I did all of them, and I didn't. There's no trophy for it. I'm like, how are you going to make me do all these Fight Clubs, and then you don't give me a trophy for beating them all? <laughs> but when you beat the when you beat the Fight Club, you can you can recruit. You can save Tyler Durden. You can save everybody that you fought in that in that round, or like you fight like three guys per, per round or whatever, and then once you done that you can recruit everybody you fought but you 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 still have to do their mission but you can save them to go into the menu and okay. do the mission 
but usually you fight like a bunch of scrubs and then the, the boss the boss fighter is the only one worth saving so i wind up just tossing the other guys and just saving them saving that yeah how about you avery recommend yeah i mean if uh if you're a Watch Dogs fan, I think it is going to satisfy, you know, you'll be pleased based off of, you know, the first two and how the series has evolved since then. Um, I played the first one because it came free when I bought my Xbox Series S, right? That was X, one before? One S. Yeah. One S, that's what it One S. Um, and so it was free. So I, I, I did dabble in it then and I liked it. I skipped the second one, but... Um, this one, no, it's been really fun. One. And I, I it, it was one of those games where I said I would play it and I just never did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, but yeah. I'm spending I mean, a gift card on that shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it, it's a great game, especially right now when we are all waiting for next gen to come out and everything. Yeah, it's, it's a, a perfect nice game. Filler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, just it, hop it's, in and. Yeah, do a it's, whole it's lot. a perfect time length, I think, is what it is. Because, you know, it came out on the 29th. It gives you around two weeks to basically kind of go through it, do what you want, and then see the next-gen upgrade. So you'll probably put a few more hours into it. And then if you mm-hmm. don't want to play it anymore, you don't. You toss it to the side. Um, it definitely right. sounds like one of those games, and and I'm happy everyone's – it's a fun game. It sounds like a fun game. I think it's going to get cool. online next you, month too. Yeah. You, I am yeah, yeah. I'm very curious for the multiplayer. I want to know. Have you ever – have, well, have, have you done the other Watch Dogs multiplayer? No. No. Oh, uh, dude, that's one of the things about Watch Dogs 2. It's, it's so fun. Um, so basically other players can come into your game and hack your shit. So you oh. have to find them. You have to, you, you have to basically track them down, hunt them down, and kill them before they leave with your shit. Oh wow! That's like cool. it's it's not like there's no real big stakes. Yeah, it's not like it's not like they can leave with with all your money and then you have to start all over. But it's like a little. But yeah, it's just like they they hack you. Your job is to basically stop the hacker from hacking you and then getting away with it. So you have to hunt them down. It's a lot of fun, man. I don't know if this is going to be like that, but it's a lot. Of fun. I saw some preview with four operatives flying on a cargo. Uh, uh, cargo drone. So it sounds like oh, a oh, that's cool as well. Yeah. One one thing I did want to say about when Tim was saying that we were scanning some people, I I I they're supposed to get a spy after you clean up uh, this one district, and I didn't get them for some reason. Like huh. I got like a beekeeper, which I already huh. had one. He shoots he shoots bees. Like he has a swarm of bees that he that's shoots incredible. at people. Uh, a beekeeper uh, plus, Sean. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Beekeeper <laughs> plus. Yes, that's right. So yeah. So I was looking for the spy. I never got the spy. So I went to, I went to the MI6 building and I couldn't find anybody. And then I went to the, um, it's like the cha- like I don't know some town hall like thing. And I found one in the parking lot. So I re- I did her mission to recruit her because she's sh- the only person that comes with a silenced pistol. And at first I was doing a no kill thing, but now I'm just like, I, I must have killed so many people I could potentially recruit just by fucking like turning a car, just to get away from like, just to distract oh, like, yeah. the, the, the Albion. Yeah. I'll turn a, I'll, I'll make a car drive into, into people <laughs> like in a, so I can run the other way and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah I definitely well, have hit a lot of people with my cars for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I got, I got like a question. Uh, yeah. John and, 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 and Avery, have you guys, it, did they change the art direction? I feel like the characters all look a lot more kind of cartoony than they did in the last two games. I don't, I mean, no, I don't really see though, but if, but if they don't look as good, it's probably because there's more going on underneath the hood now with the recruit everybody. If you okay. Yeah. They just so. all seem a little like rounded or something like a little, like a little stylized. It could be, to, again, you could see that kind of change with next gen with the next gen update. So we'll have to see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, that is what we're going to do for this episode number seven. Uh, I guess, Sean, I'll kind of swing around to you. I know you got the Watch Dogs review coming out. Um, there was one thing that we didn't talk about, and I wanted, um, they, I did see a report that uh, suspend and resume for a quick resume on Xbox. It doesn't work for every game. Okay. Well, maybe we should we'll, – we'll bring that around next week when we get our hands okay. – I'll get my hands on with it, and we'll, we'll talk about it, and we'll kind of see if we uh, – if I run into the same problem. I did hear okay. that as well, that it's not going to be supported for every game now, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see, uh, get some hands on with it and we'll take a look. But yeah, you're finishing up the Watch Dogs review right now. Anything else you're working on? <laughs> um, besides stress eating for this election, um, 
No, I'm, that's it. I'm the Watch Dogs review I plan to have done this weekend. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, we I didn't get a review copy. This is my store-bought copy. Um, so I'm reviewing that. And then, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm anxious. I, I just got too much shit to be anxious about right now. Like, between the election and next-gen consoles, I have two consoles coming because a friend of mine, I don't know if I told you guys, but I pre-ordered two PlayStations. One was a backup in case Walmart canceled my my uh, pre-order but then my friend was like oh i want to buy a ps5 for my brother where do you think i can get one and i was like uh i have another one so they were like all right so they gave me the money for that there so now go. i have to basically next week take the day off work and hunt stay outside and wait for ups to show up with a thousand dollars worth of equipment to my house <laughs> because oh, i'm not yeah. there's no way i'm letting i'm letting them even try because my my front door sometimes doesn't work and they'll just be like, oh, doesn't work. And they get back in their truck. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah. I'm buying one of those cha foldable chairs. And I'm sitting out. For, I'm literally sitting outside my apartment the whole day until they show up. <laughs> we'll play with a couple of beers, too. Yeah. A couple of drinks. Oh, uh, I'm definitely doing that. Yeah. Tim, how about you? What are you working on? Um, well, God be willing, I want to do a review for uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remaster. Yep. That comes up tomorrow. We'll, we'll see if I'm assuming we're if we get a code, yeah. If we get a code or if uh, time permits, yeah. Um, uh, typically, uh, I try and put in a decent amount of hours for a review. I've only gotten to play a few hours of Legion, so you know I'm, I'm happy Sean's doing the review for it because I wouldn't be nearly ready yet. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to get it, whatever the case is, but hopefully I can play a review because of that. That game originally was one of my favorite racing games ever, so I'm excited for that. Yeah. Um, and then and I was thinking about – I was going to do a review for Ghost Runner, but I don't think there's enough time or interest. Yeah. No, that's fair. I'm all – I'm excited. Hopefully you get uh, your hands on that. Need for Speed is definitely one of my favorite series as a kid. And uh, Avery, how about you? What are you working on? Uh, not a whole lot. Just uh, playing through Legion, getting ready for next gen. And uh, like Sean said, keep an eye on the election and uh, just keeping things going. Love it. Well, uh, for me, it's just grinding out some final destiny things. You know, I play in the new Apex season, playing Gears, a lot of old stuff, a lot of just base multiplayer games right now, uh, waiting to get my hands on the, a lot of the replay or play single player games uh, with the next gen consoles. But I think that's going to do it from us here. Uh, next gen one week away it's oh my god i'm so finally almost excited. here uh so we're gonna excited. have lots of coverage for you guys with games and we're gonna have a lot of thoughts next week for the xbox so make sure you stay tuned in uh for myself avery sean and tim this is the lock on podcast episode seven we'll see you guys next time